if you were just watching Ellen, you were introduced to Highland Park's very own heroine, Shu Harris. You are amazing. Up next, she'll be live in studio talking more about her national debut and the work she's committed to. Hey guys, I'm being introduced to some fairly new employees at Henry Ford Hospital. This is Germinator, and you're about to meet Zap. And their job is to keep this hospital squeaky clean. All right, Paula, also hack attack. Hacks have become pretty commonplace in our digital world. The latest group that was targeted, Andrew. And Karen, after this morning's clouds, even rain, we've got sunshine out there, but feeling like fall with cooler conditions later on tonight, we'll go over four zone weather, your forecast coming right up first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, local four news first at four starts now. Good afternoon. There is a mystery going on in Farmington Hills this afternoon where a 23 year old has been missing for more than a week. Elizabeth Joy Hawk disappeared on September 6th. Her car was found earlier this week in a parking lot at the Commerce Shopping Center. Hawk was last seen wearing a white tank top and pink shorts. The search continued today as police and search dogs patrolled the area where Hawk was last seen. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is asked to call Farmington Hills Police. Residents are double checking their locks today over in Northville Township. They're feeling on edge after two home invasions happened in broad daylight. I saw him go back and forth several times to our house there for a little bit, like looking in, I believe, sure. and then back to his car. And, um, and, then I, and then I saw the other guy get out when they figured no one was home. While no one was hurt in that home invasion, police are now warning all residents to be on high alert. A plea has been reached for an ex-Michigan Department of Health and Human Services employee in the Flint Water investigation. Corrine Miller entered into a plea agreement with state prosecutors for her role in that crisis. Miller served as the former director of epidemiology at the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Miller pled to a misdemeanor charge, which carries a maximum penalty of a year in prison and a penalty of $1,000. Two presidential candidates are campaigning in Michigan today with Republican candidate Donald Trump as the headliner. Trump just flew into Flint's Bishop International Airport this afternoon before heading into the city. Libertarian nominee Gary Johnson also was in Michigan today as he addressed the Detroit Economic Club earlier this afternoon. Well, time now for our first look at the forecast. Andrew, this morning it was a little chilly out there, especially with that rain, but things started to improve throughout the day. Uh, certainly did, Karen. You, you are absolutely right. We have some sunshine that's breaking out, and that's allowing our temperatures to get a nice lift. 75 degrees over at Metro Airport right now. 75 also for our friends in Ann Arbor. Still a little cooler, but drier still over in Port Huron with 68 degrees currently. And in your four zone weather, taking a look at our four zones all around the area, we're looking at upper 60s and low 70s. Metro Airport, once again, it's 75, 75 also in Ann Arbor, low 70s in our north and south zones with 72 degrees and a wind generally coming from the northerly direction. Now this evening for baseball, looking good. Expect an on-time start with dry conditions out there and clearing skies later. But grab that Tigers hat and jacket. You'll need it once again, just like a couple of nights ago. It cools off pretty quickly, going from 70s over the next couple of hours for tailgaters through the 60s, even low 60s by the end of the game. And everyone looking forward to a Tigers win over the Twins this time. We'll talk more about your forecast overnight tonight because temperatures do drop more and more of your four zone weather. We have that coming up in a few minutes. And remember, four zone weather, you can get it on the weather page of clickondetroit.com. Andrew, the medical secrets of U.S. Olympic athletes exposed. Today, a Russian group is claiming responsibility for publicly sharing medical data belonging to several athletes. Our Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom working on this story and also has more on how athletes are responding. Karen, good afternoon. You're right, private medical data belonging to three of America's most famous athletes was made public by Russian hackers. It's possibly the same group that compromised the Democratic National Committee's computer servers a few months ago. Serena and Venus Williams, as well as Simone Biles, were all targeted. The Russian group of hackers calls itself Fancy Bear. And today, the World Anti-Doping Agency confirmed the cyber group hacked into its database and obtained confidential information through phishing of email accounts as well as passwords. The drugs mentioned in the documents are commonly prescribed medications that treat various ailments, including pain 
and allergies. Now, Simone Biles acknowledged she was prescribed medication for ADHD, saying on Twitter, quote, I have ADHD and I've taken medicine since I was a kid. Please know I believe in clean sport, have always followed the rules, and will continue to do so as fair play is critical to sport and is very important to me, end quote. And the International Olympic Committee says none of the athletes targeted violated any anti-doping rules. Meanwhile, that Russian hacker group say, says that they plan to release the medical records of additional athletes from around the world in the next coming days. So stay tuned, Karen. All right, very disturbing. Thank you, Kimberly. Well, germ-fighting robots are taking over not one, but three local hospitals. No, it's not the plot of a science fiction movie. Paula Tutman introduces us to the newest generation of this groundbreaking technology. Hey guys, the use of robots is not new in hospitals, but this is a new, sorry about that. This is a new generation of robot and uh, it's state of the art. And what it does is it can disinfect this entire room with the power of light. They have fun whimsical names, Rosie Zap, the Germinator, but they have a very serious task. The future is here as these germ fighting robots go where no hand has gone before able to reach into nooks, crannies, and high places to eradicate bacteria, viruses, and microorganisms. Nothing is wrong with your television picture. Those are the pulses of UVC light searching out germs at every level. The clanking is an audio cue to the humans that the machine is on the job. Melvin works in environmental services and he loves the fleet of new co-workers. The newest generation of Xenix germ zapping robots on the ground and working or en route to every Henry Ford Health System hospital in the metro area. Snap is, he's my partner because I need him and he needs me also. He needs me to push him around and I need him to do his job to disinfect. The robots work by unraveling and destroying the cell structure of germs. Those UVC pulsating light beams can reach high and low in places humans can't see or reach to seek out and destroy the carriers of infectious disease. Hospitals are the germiest places around. Everybody Correct. Everybody says, if you don't want to get sick, don't go to the hospital. But, but that's what they say, but that's why we have these robots in it. <laughs> and in fact, the hospital reports that since this new generation of germ-fighting robots joined the workforce several months ago, Preliminary data trends towards fewer hospital-acquired infections. It's all up under, down at the bottom. It gets all in the inside of the garbage can. Yes, humanoids are still needed to wipe and scrub and clean, but that's round one. When the humans get done, they strip the beds and clear out. You notice the fresh smell when the robot was done? I did. It leaves, it, yeah, it leaves off an excellent scent, so it has a freshness of it, and it actually lasts for quite a while. Yeah, so Karen, I want to tell you a little bit more about that fresh scent because I could have sworn that little robot was spraying stuff while it was zapping germs, but apparently not. Apparently, the destroyed DNA of germs has a very particular smell, and it actually smells fresh. There are about 10 of these robots in the various Henry Ford hospitals. They've got more on the way. And while you might think these are taking away jobs, absolutely not. They are enhancing jobs and, in fact, Henry Ford hospital systems or health systems have had to hire more workers to manage the robots. So imagine that, a less germy hospital. Who would have thunk? That Karen. smells even better. I love it. All right. Thank you, Paula. We appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Ahead, Versa 4, our first look at the Tiger schedule for next season. Doc. Well, experts say up to 90% of children with asthma are using their inhalers wrong. I'm Dr. Frank and George coming up. I'll show you the most common mistakes and how to fix them. Plus, she's a local superstar who was on Ellen just minutes ago. Up next, she is live in our studio talking more about her work. How should anyone at home believe you if they want to hire you? Give her the money back. You are breaking the law. What do you say to the people of Flint who say, this has dragged on way too long? I seen my baby. I seen her burn. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm going to call help me. Hey, maybe he can help me. Oh, it all worked out. Oh, I'm so happy for you. 
Well, if you were watching Alan just a few minutes ago, you saw this Highland Park's Shoe Harris on the show being congratulated by Ellen for all of her hard work in her neighborhood. And Harris has been doing so much, buying up property on her street, creating a homework house, trying to build soccer fields, gardens, planning a cafe, all for her neighbors. Well, I was able to sit down with Shoe today and actually watch her big national appearance and get her reaction. When you can make an appearance like this, well, you know people are going to stop and listen to what you have to say. I just felt live and I heard the audience and stuff and I'm like, wow, and I know that she dances and I know that I like to dance and move. And so it just was the energy, it just felt really, really uh, high. This Highland Park mother admits part, like she had butterflies part. when she met Ellen. At Highland Park. HP! I had to get that out. I just couldn't believe her Avalon Village nonprofit got her there. Just cleaning up my backyard and then gonna clean up the rest of the block and here I am right here on Ellen. Then came the big news. Ellen gave Harris a house valued at 100 grand. The neighborhood crusader says she thinks she'll make it into an administrative office that can help more people in her neighborhood. That just had my heart just beating so fast and I knew, I was like, oh my God, this is a real big blessing mm -hmm. and this is gonna be such a wonderful addition to the village. Oh, and after the big gift, did you wonder what Ellen said going to commercial? All right, she's yeah. telling me that she want me to come back. I mean, she, that she wanna do another story and everything and um, that she wanna follow up. Well, we're doing some follow up right now. How are you doing? Oh, girl, I am so excited. <laughs> you haven't slept like in two days. Nope, I haven't. You see my eyes no. are red. You know what, though? You are just doing amazing. I love that the whole world knows exactly what you're doing now mm -hmm. in Highland Park. Mm -hmm. And there's more. We weren't even able to get to the big developments with the homework house. What's new with that? The homework house grand opening is uh, September the 23rd. Okay. It starts at six o'clock. Uh, the windows are being put in. Everything is just busy. Everybody's busy over there. And I there. understand you've got a super cool roof coming in. What's that all about? Luma Resources hooked us up with, donated a roof, a solar roof a solar for us. Roof. Yes, I am so wonderful. excited about Yes, very now, generous Now that's donation. one of many things. I mean, you, uh, you have a whole nonprofit trying to get things to help the kids, everything from backpacks and school supplies. I mean, you basically need everything to help these families. Everything to help these families. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, we have a, a school, uh, school supply giveaway, and then we have a Fat Albert and the Cosby kids uh, Film festival on oh, so it's a weekend of events. I gotta ask you real quick because we've mm -hmm. got video of you on the show. Mm -hmm. Were you just so freaking out? <laughs> Were you? I was just so nervous. Like, for you. <laughs> That's how I was. I was real excited. Like I'm excited right yeah. now. Uh, tonight we have the watch party, so I'm really excited about That's that. So right. I'll see all my friends and community people uh, be around. We're gonna have mm. something to eat. It's just gonna be so wonderful. Well, we want to follow you. Local Four is committed to what you're doing, and I know you spoke with our general manager, and we want to be there along the way. So we'll be following all of your developments. So yes. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for all you. you're doing. Thank you. TheAvalonVillage.org. That's right. We'll put it on our website. We'll make a whole special section Please. for you. Sound good? Thank you. Hit up ClickOnDetroit.com. All right, we'll send it over to you, Andrew. Thank you very much, Karen, and congratulations. Wow, putting Highland Park on the map. And we're looking at wonderful conditions, not only in Highland Park, but across the rest of the metro area. For tonight, we clear out nicely. Notice how much chillier it gets in your four zone weather. Temps as low as the 40s by tomorrow morning in places like Warren, Clinton Township, 48 degrees, while it'll be in the low 50s right here in the Motor City. South of Michigan Avenue, we're looking at temperatures that will be in the low 50s and upper 40s also. Tecumseh, around 49 degrees in our south zone. In our west zone, west of 275, even middle 40s, 45 and howl overnight. So we got a pretty chilly night coming ahead. And north of Hall Road, 40s as well. Anywhere from 47 degrees for our friends over in Port Huron to 45 in St. Clair. But looking gorgeous as we look outside right now. I know we had cloudier skies earlier, but look at the breaks in those clouds. We're looking at partly sunny skies across much of the area and 75 degrees. With that sunshine coming through, it is warming up pretty nicely this afternoon. Now we still have tropical weather to talk about. We have Ian spinning away here over open water. Not much of a concern. Closer to home, right here in the United States, over South Carolina, Charleston, you got this spin. This is Julia. Julia is still a tropical storm with winds of at least 40 miles per hour, and it's almost going to remain stationary over the next few hours, meaning a deluge of rain for South Carolina, then eventually into North Carolina as it continues to spin, and for our friends around Savannah and parts of southeastern Georgia, and we'll be watching it closely. In fact, you can track it yourself. The local forecasters app, download it for free. Just search for WDIV. You can take a look at temperatures too. 68 for our friends over in Port Huron right now, while it's 75 over at 
Metro and in Livonia. 73, a little bit warmer also over in Dundee. So we're in for mild conditions for now. All these temps though, 6 to 13 degrees below what they were just 24 hours ago. And that cooling trend continues tonight and into tomorrow. I mean, we're looking at 60s and low 70s just off to our west. So that slightly cooler air, cooler than yesterday, remains over us as we go over the next 24 hours. So I'm calling for mild conditions tomorrow afternoon. But look how clear it remains with rain building off to our west that we don't really need to be concerned about until at least the first half of the weekend. So good news for tonight. Clouds continue to leave, clears out nicely. Moon is almost full. Full moon is actually going to happen on Friday. We're looking at a low of 53 here in town for tonight. But remember those chillier 50s in the suburbs. Sunrise just around 745. Sunset that is around 745. Sunrise tomorrow at 714. 73 for a high by 4 p.m. And mostly sunny skies on Thursday, Karen. More sunshine on Friday. Warmer with 78. Then for the first half of our weekend, we got some rain coming. But it clears out nicely in time for the Lions home opener. All right, thank you, Andrew. Experts say up to really most of the children who suffer from asthma are making mistakes using their inhaler. Mm -hmm. So we brought in Dr. Frank McGeorge to talk about this because this is serious. Oh, absolutely. You know, if inhalers aren't used correctly, they just aren't as effective as one family learned firsthand. Ten-year-old Amanda Grable's asthma had gotten so severe it was life-threatening. She saw several doctors. It was very frustrating, and they and they just kept throwing more medicine, medicine, and none of it, and none of it helped. She was afraid to go to sleep at night because she was afraid she was going to die. Finally, the Grables found Dr. B.J. Lancer. He discovered Amanda had the right medicine. She was just taking it wrong. They take breaths in a totally different way that doesn't help get it into the lungs, which is where the medicine needs to go. Lancer says the biggest mistake is not using a tube-like device called a spacer. Without it, about 80% of the medicine settles in the mouth and never gets into the lungs. Many children also forget to exhale first. Take some normal breaths and then a big deep breath to fully exhale um, so that you then have empty lungs um, to take a nice big deep breath to get all the medicine deep into the lungs. Other common mistakes involve how the inhaler is positioned. Lancer says kids should stand up straight with their head in a neutral position, not tipped back. Aim the inhaler at the back of the throat and close the lips tightly around the spacer's mouthpiece. Amanda perfected her inhaler use and her asthma is now under control. I don't have to worry about everything, and I'm just, I feel like I don't have asthma anymore. I do, but it feels like I don't. It's like we have a new Amanda who's just joyful and happy and loving, and she can fully engage now. And for a list of the top 10 inhaler mistakes and how to fix them, check out the health page at clickondetroit.com. All right, as always, big thank you. Thanks. Ahead first at four, who's coming to Comerica Park to play the Tigers next year? We've got the schedule, which includes two teams we rarely get to see around here. And did your childhood favorite make the cut? This year's nominees for the Toy Hall of Fame, revealed next. My name is... Time to talk trending stories. The National Toy Hall of Fame has revealed the big list, the finalists for the 2016 class, and some of those finalists include Care Bears, Transformers, Rock'em Sock'em Robots, The Coloring Book, and Bubble Wrap. The winners will be inducted to the Hall of Fame November 10th. To be recognized, toys must have lasted across generations, influenced the way toys are designed, and fostered learning or creativity. Well, lots of folks are talking about this. The Tigers schedule for next year. They play 81 games at Comerica Park next season, per usual, highlighted by the series against the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. Opening day, Friday, April 7th, as the Tigers host the Boston Red Sox. While single game tickets are not on sale yet, eager Tiger fans can place a deposit on that 2017 season. Tickets starting today. Coming up ahead at four, Comic Cutie, an 11 year old boy is trying to save the environment. What unique project he's on, he is embarking on. How do they do it? We look for specific markings. Solving crimes. This is a magnetic powder. See for yourself. And what we do is highly scientific. The Defender's taking you inside this forensic lab for a lesson in crime solving like you've never seen before. Tonight at 11. Tubbies. Well, an 11 year old boy over in Brooklyn is showing his concern about the environment by taking matters into his own hands. That's right, Karen. And his unique way of doing it is very impressive. Instead of putting up signs and making posters, Jaden Anthony has made a comic book to show environmental issues and solutions. 
It's worth being horrible to our own mankind. And we want to turn that around. And we're trying to say we should turn that around. Oh, Jaden bases the characters on his friends and hopes that the comic will inspire people to be more environmentally responsible. Wow, great artwork, too. Gotta love it when the kids teach the adults, right? That's right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for First at Four. We are back in a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Inside Edition is next.